sometimes you kind of try to build something really cool uh, and you have to do multiple parts. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I've built some of this already. So let me just tell you what I have. I have here, right here, a moving charge. And this is in Python, so it's not a real moving charge. Okay, we get that. So that's moving charge right there. And then I have a ring right there. And the thing is, I wanna calculate the magnetic flux due to this moving charge at that instant for the ring. Okay, so uh, let's switch over to the paper. And the, the problem is this idea of how you do a surface integral to calculate the flux when the magnetic field's not constant. That's the problem. I don't know if you can see that already, but that's the problem. So let me switch over to the paper and go over the, the two big ideas that we need here. And that's the magnetic field due to moving charge and magnetic flux. Okay, so paper, paper right there. Okay, so, oh. So if I have a moving charge, it could be going this way, QV, and I wanna find the magnetic field over here at some other location, R, uh, then I could calculate that magnetic field as QV cross, that's a cross product R hat, right? R hat is in the same direction as R, it's R over R magnitude. I don't really wanna talk about all the details about this equation because I've done that before, okay? And I'll in include a link down below for that. Uh, so, but I can do that. I can calculate the magnetic field everywhere that I want at this instant, wherever that is. And if, if I want to find R over here, I could do that. It'd be different because I have a different R vector. It'd be a different direction. Everything would be different. Now, magnetic flux is defined as the surface integral. That's why there's two uh, integrals here. This is over probably two dimensions. It doesn't have to be, but it, you know, we, we, we could write it like that, of the flux. And so flux is the essentially the amount of magnetic field that passes through that area. But we have a problem here. I mean, normally what we do is the following. I would take, uh, I'd calculate the magnetic flux for some case that's useful for Ampere's law. And in those situations, I'm sorry, not the magnetic flux, uh, the, the electric flux I would calculate for, for useful situations. And the same is true for magnetic flux, okay? Uh, but I would pick some situation such that the magnetic field and the surface area are perpendicular and constant. Okay, so let's consider that situation. Here is some magnetic field B, and it's constant in space and time, it doesn't really matter. And then here I have some surface area that's tilted and such that this is, let's call this n hat. That's the orientate, and this is uh, A. If that's the case, I can say the flux is just B dot n hat times the area. And so in, if this is the angle theta right there, I could even write this as B A cosine theta. Right, because once I take the dot product between b and n hat, n hat is a unit vector with the magnitude one, then I'm done. Right, that just becomes b cosine theta, and I'm multiplied by the area. Not a big deal. Now, but what about over here if I have this ring? And I have a moving charge right there. So I know that I can calculate the magnetic, the direction of the magnetic field using the right hand rule. There's a positive charge, and that's v. So I'm gonna get the magnetic fields coming out of the page. I'll draw this as big, two big circles. And then over here, as you get further away, the magnitude of the magnetic field decreases. They're always pointing in the same direction in this case. Uh, so the problem is, well, how would I calculate the flux? How would I integrate B dot N hat DA over that area? And if you have a mathematical expression for B as a function of displacement, which we do, then technically you can do this uh, just by writing out a surface integral. But it, it could be super complicated. Imagine even like this charge is up here off the XY plane and uh, I, I, don't, I don't even have the same direction. So it can be really tough. So what we do is instead of doing this, break this integral into a bunch of smaller areas and through each of those areas, assume that the magnetic, if it's small enough, the area is, the magnetic field's constant over that area. And I can calculate the magnetic flux through each one like this. So I can say D delta phi is B, B dot N hat delta A, where delta A is this size. Okay. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I've already written about this, a way to do numerical surface integrals. I have three ways to do it. Okay, and I'm going to do, so I'm going to use that same idea to calculate the flux in this situation. And in fact, I might move, I might move the charge off the XY plane just to make it more interesting. Um, and the first way is, I'm going to show you the three ways, and then I'll do the three ways. So the three ways are number one, break this into a bunch of squares, like that, right? And each one of those squares I can do. Uh, the next is to break this into uh, wedges using polar coordinates. That's a terrible wedge. Okay, well you get the idea. And then the third way is to break this into a bunch of random circles that completely cover the whole thing. Okay, so this is Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, and then this will be a Monte Carlo calculation. So I'd like to do all three of those in this case. Let's see if we can get started. So uh, let's start with the Cartesian system. How do we break this into uh, squares? If this has a radius of r, and then I pick a square size that's dx by dy, but it's going to be a square, so dx and dy are the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a square right here. And then it's going to start at that location. It's not at the center. I don't know why I didn't start at the center, but you can start at however you like. Um, that's the location of my thing. And it's that initial location is going to be the vector. Uh, I'm going to call this the vector RB. And it's going to be dx over 2, dy over 2, 0. Right? Because it's shifted over half and up a half. Now the next square I'm going to put over here is just going to be a distance dx to the side. And I'm going to keep doing that until this vector rb is greater, is, as long as, as long as rb magnitude is less than or equal to the, mag, the radius of the circle. Then I can keep doing that. I can keep adding those up and I get all the way over here. Then I need to start it again and do it right here on the negative side, going that way. Uh, and then I need to do this thing this whole row, I need to do the same thing, but sh start right here and move up, go over, go over, move up, go over, and keep doing that again until I get to r is greater than the radius of the circle. And then I need to repeat the whole thing for the bottom. Okay, so it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to, squares are easy to deal with, right? Um, but but the, the limits aren't as trivial, but it's not so bad. Okay, so I already, I already wrote the code for this, uh, so I'm going to redo it. Um, but I am going to look over at what I wrote because I don't want to take forever. Uh, the link for that will be down below. So I already have a ring here. I have my charge. I want to break this ring into pieces. That's my goal here. Okay, so let's do that. So the first thing I need to do is to pick a size for dx. So I'm going to say dx equals, so my circle has a radius of 0.05, so 5 centimeters. I'm going to, I want 10, 10 squares across the side. So I'm going to say 2 times r divided by 10. That's going to be 10, the diameter divided by 10. That's how big that is. Okay. So now the first thing, I'm just going to add up squares uh, across. I'm going to start with the initial position. I'm going to call that rb. It's going to be vector dx over 2, dx over 2, right? Because they're dx and dy are the same, uh, 0. Well, I don't want to have non circuit non I guess you could. But I have square, square, I have square boxes. Now I'm going to say while that value, the magnitude of that vector RB is less than or equal to the radius of the circle, then do the following. And the first step, oh, I need one more thing. What I'm going to do is I'm not just going to make squares. I'm going to make all these squares to fill up the circle. I'm going to add them to a list of squares. That list of squares will then allow me to go back and look at all the squares and use them when I calculate the flux. So let's make an empty list. Areas equals areas. No, it equals this. Just an empty list. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add my RB, my square at that location, to my areas list. So I'm going to say areas equals areas plus a box. A box is a built-in function in Python. I need a position. The position is just going to be RB. Uh, I need a size. Size is going to be the vector uh, dx, dx, 0. Oh, and, and say 0, let's say 1, 0 0.0001. I don't know. The thickness of it doesn't really matter. Um, and then do I need, that's it. I could, I could make it a color. I could do this other stuff and things like that. 
So I've, I've placed my box into my areas list. Now I need to move over one to the right. So I can say RB equals RB. That's my, that's my location of the center of my box plus a DX. So plus vector DX zero zero, right? I'm moving in the X direction. That should do it. Let's just see if it does indeed work. And there you go, there's my boxes. You can't see that they're boxes because there's no space in between them. I could put this 0.95 times just to make them a little bit smaller. I guess I'll do that. Let's do that. And then let's do, um, let's do this. Let's do this and add an attribute to my box, right? I never, I never gave the box a name. I don't really care. It's part of that areas list. So I'm going to say DA equals uh, DX squared. So this will allow me to go back. I can leave that 0.95 in there. And if I want to reference the area of that piece, I can just say dot DA. Okay. I guess I'll show you that. Let's say, let me show you how that works. Print areas. Uh, let's put print the third one, the second one, the third one, areas two, that's kind of going to reference that one, dot DA. Okay, let's print out the position of the two, print areas two dot POS, just so you can see how that would work. Because there you can see one, two, three, four, five. There's the area, which is uh, 0.01, oh, I divided by five, yeah, times squared, so I think that is right. Uh, and then there's the position. Just, just so you can see how that works. Okay. Unless we don't need that though. Okay, but now I need to go back and I need to do the whole thing going to the negative side. So I'm going to reset my RB. I'm going to say RB equals vector uh, negative DX over to DX zero. And I'm going to do the same thing exactly. I'm just going to copy this with one difference and that I'm going to move to the, I'm going to add this in the negative X direction. Let's see if that, uh, yeah. Ooh. That's weird. RB, oh, DX over two. So that's the nice thing about making these big blocks. You can see when you make a mistake. Okay. So now I have a whole row of squares in the circle. To add the next row, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to do both those loops. And I need to do both those loops a whole bunch of times. So I need a, a loop. I need two loops inside of a loop. So let's go up here and say um, while mag rb less than or equal to r and then I'm gonna in I'm gonna tab dent indent all this stuff. Okay, now I need to. I'm trying to think. Okay, so actually, what I'm gonna do is at the end of rb dot x. What did I do up here? I'm looking at what I did before. RB, okay, so at the end of this loop, I put RB.X equals, oh, I moved, I moved, okay, that's right. I can't do this, right? Because I don't want to go all the way back down to zero. I just want to move the X coordinate back to the middle. Because if I'm moving up a row, I want to not go back down to the middle. So I'm going to say RB.X, which is just the X component of RB, is equal to negative dx over two. So I'm only moving the x component. Whatever the y was, it stays the same. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the y direction. And then I finish my row. So what do I do when I finish my row? Now I need to move my, uh, my x component back to dx over two, back to the right side of the center. So I can say rb.x equals dx over two. And then I need to move my y component up one. So rb.y, rb.y equals rb.y plus dx. Remember, dx is my step size. Okay, now, but this doesn't do everything in the negative direction. So let's just run this and see if this works because you never know when things are going to break. Okay, let's save it. Run it. There we go. There's all my boxes filling up the top half. So now what I need to do is redo the exact same thing, but start in the negative direction. So that shouldn't be too hard. I can just copy all this stuff.
Okay, but now I'm going to, uh, let's see. Do it again, but what am I gonna change? So over here, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be minus, no, that's still the same. That's still the same. The only thing down here is I, I need to start, I need to start, start with uh, RB equals vector DX over two, negative DX over two, right? Now I'm down in the negative Y direction, zero. And then I'm going, this one's still gonna be moving across. That's still the same. Uh, this is just gonna be minus. I think that will work. Let's see, that turn up the, okay, let's see. I think that's gonna work. Bam, 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 I got it, okay. And you'll notice it doesn't fit perfectly, right? Because my, my but it's actually pretty good. Um, let's just see how many squares are in there. Uh, so what I can do down here now, remember those are all in, uh, and a list called areas. So I can go over here and say, uh, let's just so print length of areas. And that will tell how many items are in that list. 80, okay. Now, what would happen if I want to have uh, more squares, more cowbell, as you would say? So what if I say this is dx equals 2r over 20? So twice as many across, which means twice as many both ways. And now I run it. See, actually, look, that fits in there really nicely. That just looks, that's art, that's art. Look at that. It's like graph paper in a circle. I don't know, I'm just kind of amazed that it even works, to tell you the truth. 316, so you see you have a lot more. Um, let's leave it like that. Okay, so but now we have our list. I'm actually gonna add in something else in here, which I should have done before. I have that DA, that DA attribute. I'm gonna go ahead and add in an in hat attribute for everyone. Now they're all the same, okay? But it's possible that they might be different in some situations. So I'm gonna go over here and say in, I'm gonna call this uh, property in hat, in hat, and it's gonna be, in hat is gonna be in the Z direction. Let's call this the Z direction. This is Z direction. So in hat is gonna be vector zero, zero, one. I'm gonna put that and every element, so I can I can call that. So let's see, put that there, put it there, I need a comma. And you know, I'd like to point out that this there are better ways of doing this, but the best way is the way that you understand, right? So if, if I have to have these loops in a weird way without it not being elegant, don't ever be afraid to be in unelegant. You wanna do it the way that makes sense to you. Okay, there's, there's a balance between um, how much tedious work I have to do and how much planning I have to do, right? Maybe if it's too tedious, uh, I, I'd wanna think about it and try to make it a little bit more elegant, but, but that's always that, that area you're trying to find where you should be. I think this way is fine for me, I'm happy with it, okay? So, but now I do have that area list. Now what I can do, I wanna create uh, a function that calculates the magnetic field of any location to do that thing. Okay, so let's go up here and do that. Um, I mean, I'm gonna, let's, let's just do this. I guess I could put it anywhere, but let's put def b. I, mean, I know that's boring and that's not necessarily good. So really what do I need? What functions do I wanna pass into there? You could use a global function for uh, the charge that's already there. That's what I feel like I wanna do, but I don't wanna set a bad example for the young kids out there. Uh, so let's give it a charge Q, which is a object, and a velocity V, yeah, that's good, and a radius R, right? So Q is the charge that I'm that's moving with the velocity V, those two are vectors, and R is the vector from the charge to where I want to find the magnetic field. Okay, so then I put a colon right there. I should put, say this calculates B due to charge to charge Q moving with velocity B at R. Okay, so I, I have KM already. I don't really need to do this again, but KM equals, this is, this is a bad idea. Don't, 
don't do everything I do. Make better choices than me. That's what you need to do. You need to make better choices. Okay, so KM, now I can, I want to calculate the magnetic field. So I can just do that all in one, let's just do that all at one thing. Uh, let's say B temp, right? I can't say B because B is a function. So that this is a temporary magnetic field. It's going to be mu naught, which is KM, times uh, the cross product, cross Q times V with R hat, which is norm R. So, so R hat, the unit vector, uh, the unit vector of a vector, the norm, we call that, uh, this is built-in function of Python for that, for glow script, it's called norm. That returns the unit vector in that direction. So that's QV cross R hat, and then you divide that by the magnitude of built-in function in Python of R, and then you'd square that. And then let's return BT. Okay, so let's test this. So let's print uh, B of charge dot Q, charge dot V, and then I need a location. Let's say R temp equals, um, let's put it at the origin, equals uh, vector zero, zero, zero. So I'll put down here R temp. And this will put those values into my magnetic field function and print out the magnetic field vector. I didn't print the units. I just wanted to see if it works. Okay, ooh, object promise. So this is a problem with, uh, I think, GlowScript 3.1. If I change that to 3.0, it can't find the variable return because I typed it wrong. Okay, return. Hmm. Cross, Q, why does it return? Let's try this, 3.1. Hmm, 3 point, wait. so NAN is not a number. Norm R, oh, R temp is a vector zero, zero, zero. Oh, that's R, okay. I'm trying to calculate the magnetic field. I, that's the vector from uh, the charge to the location. So I put R of zero, and you can't calculate because you divide by an uh, infinite number. So let's just put this at the origin would be the vector actually neg negative. Uh, so the charge is at zero, at 0 0.01, so this would be negative 0 0.01, no 0 0.1, right? So that's that way. Okay, so there's my magnetic field in the positive z direction, which is what I said, right? That's coming out of the page. I think it is indeed working. Let's just put another value in here to make sure it works. Let's say uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, still in the z direction. That's what we'd expect. Okay, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so that function seems to be working. I can delete this. So now we wanna calculate the flux. Um, I've, this, all this stuff just made that areas list. I, once I have the areas list, I can go ahead and calculate my flux. So let's say this, uh, flux equals zero. So what I'm gonna do is to go through each element in my circle, and I'm gonna take the, calculate the magnetic field at that location, use that to find the flux for that piece, and then add it to the total flux. Easy, okay. I'm, it's not easy. That was wrong. I shouldn't have even said that. This was insulting. It's not easy. Okay. It's fun. Challenging. Okay. So watch this. For, um, let's call it A in, let's call it D. Uh, I can't call it DA. Let's call it this A. A in, let's call it area. Area in areas. So I could do something like, um, you know, print, um, area.pos. This is going to be a mess, right? But it's going to go through each element in there and print out the area. Just I'm showing you with these four loops uh, how they work. So you see I get I get a ton of stuff. So print it out the uh, the position of each one of those, which I didn't want to do. But I'm just showing you that I could. Okay. So what I want to do is to calculate deflux. So let's say deflux is going to be equal to b dot in hat times DA. That's all I need to do. So I'm, I'm going to say B 
I need to give it my values, right? So it's going to be, oh, I need to calculate R first. Okay, so let's say R temp temp equals uh, the location of the square minus the location of the charge. So this is going to be areas dot area dot POS minus charge dot POS. Right, that's that vector from the charge to that in particular piece of area. Now I can calculate my magnetic field. Uh, it's going to be B. Um, what I, I had QVR. So it's going to be charge dot Q charge dot V R temp. And that would just return the magnetic field at that location. So what I need to do is do B dot N hat. So I'm going to say the dot product is built into Python. No surprise there. So dot of all that, that's my one vector. My other vector is going to be area dot n hat. See how that works? I've already put that n hat in there. I could just do the vector one zero zero, but I didn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, and that's, and then I need to multiply that. It's b dot n hat times da. So multiply that times area dot da. See, I had the area in there also. Uh, so that's it. That's deflux. Then I can say flux equals flux plus deflux. Then I can go down here, print B flux equals flux. And that's in uh, Tesla meter squared. Yeah. Of course, I don't know that this is going to work. So let's just hope that it does. Okay. So is that right? Um, I, I'm going to assume that is right. Well, let's do the let's do one thing. Let's make the square size smaller and see if we get a similar answer. But that number is important, right? Because I'm going to do this a different way. Um, actually, I'm not. I said I said I was going to do that a different way. I'm going to I'm going to describe the other. I'm not going to do it a different way. Uh, so I am going to see if this is a legitimate answer. Um, so if this is a legitimate answer, then if I'm, I, I can, I can do something, right? I could do something like move the charge really far away. Let's do, let's move the charge further away and the flux should decrease. So, um, so that's 1.75 times 10 to the negative eighth. Remember that number. Okay. Now let's move the charge to, uh, twice as far away. And run it again. And now I'll get four times in the negative ninth. So it did decrease. I'm happy with that. That seems to make sense. Uh, what if I put, you know, what if I put the charge inside this, the thing? I think that'd be a bad idea because I'd get, if I had the charge on a square, I could get an R temporary value of zero and that would be bad. So I don't want to do that. There's a way you could fix that, but I don't, I would just go through and say, if R is less than some number, then just don't calculate the flux. But we can we can treat that situation later. Um, let's put this back to point one. Um, let's make the square size bigger. So let's make it back to 10 and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so I get I get about the same thing, 1.7 times 10 that I've eight. That's that's promising. Let's put this at uh, even smaller. Okay, see, so I think I think that's pretty good. That's a good sign. Uh, let's do something else. Let's put this at 20. Let's put this at 10. Uh, I'm going to show you something cool. Um, let's say this. If deflux greater than zero, area dot color equals color dot red area dot opacity oh this one's tough hmm okay let's leave that off uh, if deflux less than zero area dot color equals color dot blue so this, this is going to make the parts that are have a positive flux red the parts have a negative flux blue I think that'll work 
and just one. Ah. <laughs> uh, That's strange. Oh, camp deflux. That's why. It stopped. Okay, so let's edit this. I, there's a typo. I was really starting to question my whole reality there for a second. If deflux. Deflux. Okay, they're all red. Okay, let's do this. Watch this. Print areas zero. No. I could add an element there called flux. That'd be fun. Watch this. Uh, area dot flux with a lowercase f. Let's call it phi for flux equals deflux. Now every area, I've added an element to each one uh, and the value is a flux. I need that number for each one because I, I want to print, let's print areas, I don't know, 10, I just picked one, dot phi. That's going to be the flux for that one particular area. I think this worked. Okay, so I get 10 to the negative, 2 times 10 to the negative 10th. I need that because I want to set the opacity. So if it's highest flux, the highest flux is going to be 1. The lowest flux is going to be 0. Okay, so 0 flux would be 0. So this is the highest flux. Let's say this is around the highest flux. Okay, so if I divide the flux by this value, I'd get 1 around there. So up here, I can go... Uh, Area, uh, area dot opacity equals, okay, let's go up here, uh, flux max equals 2 times, what did I say that was? Was it 2 times 10 to the negative 8? I already forgot. Two times 10 to the negative 10th. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so, uh, Deflux max, oh, deflux max equals 2 times 10 to the 10th. Negative 10th. Yeah, negative 10th. So then I'm going to say the opacity is uh, area dot phi, which I could just use deflux, divided by deflux max. So this means that if it's like zero flux, it's going to be Clearer. Okay, and this is the number that you just kind of have to play around with. But and then we're we're not talking about physics anymore. We're talking about art. Okay, so this is art. Ah, yeah, look at that. Now it's a little dark, right? So if I want a, a little bit brighter, what I can do is to increase the values of all those by uh, decreasing my flux max. That would make, I'd, yeah, I think so. But that still looks pretty good. Okay, let's decrease the flux max. So let's say one, let's just try it. One times 10 to the negative 10th, see what happens. Yeah, um, I think also because they're really thin, I think that's part of the problem. Let's go up here and uh, make them thicker. Let's get rid of two of these. I need to go up here. I made them too thin. Okay, now let's run it. Okay, now, so that was my problem. So I need to put the opacity back to two. I think this will work. Yeah, so there you can see that it's brighter on this side than on that side, because as you move further away, and this tells me that it's working, right? It's brighter on this side as, it, as you move away, it gets darker because there's less flux because the magnetic field's smaller. Okay, now let's move the charge it off the xy plane. Let's move it. This this is like I said, this is art. So the charge is at uh, one, and let's move it in the y in the z direction, point one. So it'd be this way. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I just can't see it. 
Okay, so the flux decreased, right? So my, my total flux decreased was further away. So I'm actually gonna put my flux max at, uh, here's my flux max, 10 to the negative 11th. So let's go back over here, seven times 10 to the negative 11th. Let's put this at five times 10 to the negative 11th. That's too high. Seven times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, well, I'm not too happy with that. Let's put it straight over, straight over this so that we should get some negative and some positive flux and see if that works. So I'm gonna put this at uh, the charge is at x equals zero, y equals, I mean, z equals 0.1, right? So it's directly in front of it. Okay, all the blues are so dark. I guess, hmm, why is that? Uh, I mean, it looks kind of cool. Something weird happened. Blue, opacity, what was my max flux? Let's try changing that. The max flux is nine. Ah, I'm drawing my negative number. That's why. So, because I have a negative flux. So, nine times 10 to the negative 12th. So, let's go up here. Flux max is, uh, this changes to 10 to the negative 12th. And the opacity is going to be the absolute value, ABS, of that flux. Check that out. Okay, now it's too big. Is this not have? Is this not fun? This is fun. Um, okay, so change that. It's too. I'm dividing by too small of a number. Hmm. Well, okay, that doesn't look great. But okay, so the next. Th let's talk about homework. So I'm going to stop right here. The homework that you need to do. One, can you make this so that the charge is moving, and the flux is changing? That'd be pretty cool, huh? Uh, number two, look at my medium post and see if you can do this with the Monte Carlo. I'm gonna do the Monte Carlo method anyway. I'm gonna do that in another video. Uh, can you do this with the Monte Carlo method and does it work with the Monte Carlo method? Uh, number, you could do it with the polar coordinate method too, which I didn't really like as much. I like this way better. Um, what about another charge? What if you did? What if you did like a, a a line of charge? This was a physics problem a while ago, right? It was a line of current that the current's changing, and you're calculating the flux over here and the changing flux. Because remember, the changing flux tells you something about the induced EMF around that thing. So that's why we're doing this. Plus, it's just cool. I don't like it. So um, I think there might be something wrong with this final one, but it it looks like it's working fairly well. So okay. I'm gonna give you the code. I'm gonna give you the link to my Medium article. Uh, I'm gonna give you a link to uh, a thing about the magnetic field versus electric field due to charges. Uh, and if you need something else, if there's some, and the code, for, I said the code. If there's something else that you need, just let me know. Cause you know I'm here for you. I'm gonna make more stuff because I have a good time. And thank you for spending this time with me. And we'll do some more physics later. That means, that means talk to you later. <laughs>